we're back at the same place where we were yesterday and just as we'd hoped things have changed drastically over the night we've got the flat rock male in the same tree where we left the mashaba female yesterday I can see James just a little bit further away in the drainage line he's with the Nklanguleni female now who's on site the Tracker Academy have found the Shmungwe young male walking in the same area just a little further away no sign of the Mashaba female or Shimungwe female just yet which means there have been five leopards on this kill in the last oh, there have been five leopards on this kill in or near this kill in the last 12 hours or so oh hyenas chasing Okay, this place never ceases to amaze us. What with plot twists and the last thing we expected and... Okay, right. There's a log coming up there. So we've left the scene of the kill. Flat rock male's lying up in the tree, guarding the kill. I don't think any of the females are going to get much of a chance to feed for now. Big male's just going to sit there and keep it for himself. The Thlanguleni female, who we never expected to be there, she is steaming away into the thickets. We are sticking with her, it looks like she's got suckle marks, i.e. she has given birth to cubs. She was heavily pregnant last time we saw her. So we're going to stick with her and hope that she takes us to a den, although we suspect it'll probably be quite far away, because it's most likely off in her normal territory in the Sand River, a couple of kilometers west of us, this way. So, the plan was to follow her for as long as it took till she went back to her den. We are hoping that's not going to take as long as we thought. There's a collection of boulders in the drainage line that she's heading directly towards, only about 300 meters ahead of her. And given that the Slangolini females moved her territory a bit in the last few months, and the fact that she's left that kill and she's just marching straight towards that den, den, a previously used den, we're thinking maybe the cubs are there. It's starting to look good, but uh, I mean, Given the odds, she'll probably just walk straight past it. But let's see, she's getting close. All right, so she didn't go back to those boulders. But this area is filled with deep drainage lines, with termite mounds, with holes in them, lots of places she could stash cubs. So what we want to see from her is just slowly approaching a likely looking spot and then making a soft little contact call and that's calling the cubs out letting them know it's safe just her behavior the fact that she's walking through thick it's just on a straight line suggests she's going back to a den but it's certainly not confirmation so we're just going to have to stick with her and hope. So it would seem that Sean and I have picked the short straw this morning. Um, although sitting with a male leopard in a tree should never be regarded as the short straw. But when James and Pete and Guy in the other car are all following the Slanguleni female who's lactating, she's headed towards some boulders. They've made the call that she's taking them back to the den site, which we haven't seen. He's a little bit north of me, I'll come towards where you are. Copy, I'll try and keep visual for now. We definitely feel like we're missing out. And she's now stalking something. She's seen probably an antelope in the thickets here. We can't see what it is, but she's gone flat and she's showing serious interest. Oh, so it started out with such promise, but now she's fast asleep in a very dense thicket. So, yeah, I think it's probably best if we leave her, although we were planning to stay with her until she went to a den. We're still not entirely convinced that she has given birth. It's pretty hard to see. You look at the teat to see if cubs have been suckling. You can see the fur gets very matted down around the teats and damp with their saliva. So yeah, it's tricky to say. Um, to me, it does look like she's got a bit of loose skin around her belly now that she's lying down. And the way she's been moving, 
I think she's given birth, but yeah, we'll have to see cubs to, to confirm that. If we stick with her for too long now in the thicket, she might be wanting to hunt. Well, she was showing interest in something, now she's stalked right past the vehicle and we don't want to disturb her too much. Plus, sometimes they're just reluctant to head back to the den if something's following them and we qualify as something. So, just in the interest of sensitivity, I think we'll leave her be and yeah, we'll leave the whole cup search for another day. So we've run into a beautiful journey of giraffes first thing this morning. A couple of them are exhibiting fairly interesting behavior which not a lot of people are aware about or aware of and when it comes to giraffes it's called osteophagia which is the eating of bones and they do this to supplement apparently many phosphorus in their diet the problem here is we just heard a leopard calling a couple of hundred meters away and it's usually too much temptation to resist <laughs> I'm not even gonna try we're gonna go see if we can find the leopard and then we'll come back to the giraffes in a few minutes all right, so we've heard this leopard call again now, but it sounds like it's in the river close to the far bank, which is going to be pretty hard to access. In fact, I think impossible in this area. So ideally, we want to just try to catch a glimpse of it with the binox and then make a call from there. But yeah, this might just be a little bit too far for us to get to. Yeah, just caught a glimpse of its tail disappearing into a thicket. Nice to even just catch a glimpse of a leopard. We've just heard kudu barking. Kudu, and pretty much never lie. If they're barking, they've seen a predator. The problem is they bark very loudly. Especially in winter, you can hear them far away. So by the time you get there, often whatever they were barking at has moved off. Uh, most likely they've seen a leopard, but oh, we're probably looking at around a 25% chance of finding whatever they've seen. Okay, we haven't found the kudu, but we've now got monkeys alarm calling just down here. And that's an almost sure sign it's a leopard. Monkeys are alarm calling just up here. You can probably hear them behind me. And they're now squirrels alarming over that way. There's a little drainage line here, so I think this leopard's moving across our front like this. We just got to gamble, push on ahead along the drainage, hope to bump into it. Monkeys are still calling, squirrels are going crazy right here. There's leopards here, it's somewhere. Within a hundred meters. Now we've got tracks of a female leopard right here. And this is when you've got to take it slow because you don't want to be just driving, racing around because then you miss the alarm calls, you miss the leopard calling. One way to age tracks is to see what's walked on top. Doesn't look like anything's walked on these, they look fresh. I think this might be the female. That we're after. What? Well, it's a female track, so let's see. She goes down this road. Just behind her, if it is her. It's pretty special when you get off the car to track a leopard. <laughs> and you look up when she's about 15 meters away from you in the bush, just watching you. So it looks like a young female. She's about to come out onto the road just up ahead. At first glance, it looks like the Plark Rock female. She's a young female, only a couple of years old. I can hear all the little birds shouting at her, rattling cysticulars and prinias. People come from all over the world to view leopards, but on, on their home turf, they're the most despised creatures because they're a danger for everything. So a monkey shouted them, we've heard squirrels alarming. It started with the kudu that we heard from about a kilometer away. They put us in the area, then we heard the monkeys, then the squirrels gave us a direction. They sent us down here, we found her tracks, followed her tracks. Eventually we got her, and now tiny little birds are alarming at her. So shame, leopards, leopards have a hard time. Imagine walking down the street and everyone shouting at you. She's sniffing around fairly intently, she's just walking with her nose down on the scent trail of something, almost certainly another leopard.
Okay, wow, that was exciting. So, no wonder she was sniffing around. There was a kill in the area. A little bit embarrassing. I drove straight past that tree while I was following her. So she went up, started feeding, and then suddenly took, came down and bolted. Spotted another leopard coming in. It was the Shimungwe female, who's now chased her off. And I'm just trying to find them again. They both took off in this direction. I can't see either of them I'm looking for those white tail tips. So I'm just going to switch off and listen because I might hear some growling. But, so I've come back to the kill and I can just see the Shimungwe female is now returning. She's just having a sniff around. Probably just to make sure that the Plark Rock female has moved off. So I think this is where we leave her be. She's asleep in the long grass behind the kill there. We can't see a thing, just the occasional twitch of an ear. There's still quite a bit of meat left on the carcass. So almost certainly she'll be here tonight. And as we've seen quite a bit in the last few days, just because one leopard's on a kill doesn't mean more won't come along. We've already seen that this morning. You never know, the flat rock male might come past here and steal this. But now there's nothing more for us to see. She's lying flat out. The plark rock female's disappeared. Kill's still up in the tree. Good. We'll come back this afternoon and see what happens here. Okay, we're coming to look for mating leopards this morning. James and I are coming in from the west, just crossing the river now. Beautiful sunset down there. Guy and Pete are going from the far side. We think they're mating in the river somewhere just in front of camp, so we don't even know if we can get a vehicle in there. The best tactic is to go close, listen, pinpoint where the noise is coming from, and then we'll make a decision from there. Okay, guys heard these leopards again. They're a little bit further down the river. He thought they were on the southern bank, but it seems like they might just be in the main channel itself, which means access is going to be pretty tricky. Okay, so we've just heard the leopards mating again. Turns out they're in the middle of the river. <laughs> so now we've got to try to get in there. Yeah, we're talking about this being a patience game. No better way to spend time than with two wild dogs that guys just found running along the road here. So, hey, fantastic. Let's see where they go. They're being trailed by a hyena. Sure, so these wild dog have eluded us. They've run into this thick block where we couldn't follow. So we're going to do a loop up ahead of where they were going and see if they pop out. But I think they might have gone for the day. And um, if nothing, we'll head back into the area where Guy and Pete are still looking for those mating leopards. But they think they're in the middle of the river, so very hard to get to. Just going to wait here a little bit. Listen out for the leopards one more time. We left James and James following the two wild dogs. We'll catch up with them later if we can't find these leopards. Amazing to see how such huge creatures can be so delicate and how they all followed exactly the same path as they crossed through the river. It also worked quite in our favor as we weren't so sure if we could cross there or not. But having watched the elephants as they walked through the water, we knew that we'd be able to get the Land River through there. So 
So Guy and Pete have been sitting on the bank for the last half an hour or so. They said they haven't heard these leopards again, which either means they're just, the leopards are taking time out and resting, or they might have moved off a little bit. So James and I are just coming walking into the river just to see if we can see any tracks and find out where they're moving. It's pretty thick in here, so we're going pretty slowly. Sometimes get hippos resting in these reed beds during the day in winter. Confirm, did you guys drive through this section, through that uh, main channel? Yeah, Go away from north to south. And so one of the best things about getting on foot is that you see parts of the reserve you never normally would. And this is now right in the middle of the river. Yeah, it's pretty tough to access with a vehicle, but it's absolutely stunning with these rock formations, gently flowing water, and no mating leopards, unfortunately. And they're close here somewhere, I'm sure, but it's so thick in here, I don't think we're going to see them this morning. So we're going to wait till they pop out, because leopards will mate for a couple of days usually, and so we'll see if there's any sign of them popping out in the next 24 hours or so, maybe this evening if we're lucky. This afternoon is all about elephants down by the Sand River. Got a beautiful herd with a lot of little calves feeding all around us. This is magnificent. sitting with the biggest animal in the world, the biggest mammal in the world, I should say. Still not. What's the biggest? Land mammal. You're <laughs> <laughs> splitting hairs. <laughs> Time does stand still when you're with elephants. A big herd like this as well. In the late afternoon, they've just been slowly feeding all around us. And with elephants, you want to keep your distance from the biggest animal that we get out here. This herd's been incredibly relaxed and so we've just sat quietly as they've walked towards us and literally fed right next to the car. There have been quite a few very cute little elephant calves playing around. There's an older one trying to kick the other one away. There's one coming right in front of us now. The sun's just gone down and we've just spent the most phenomenal afternoon with elephants. We heard the leopards mating that we'd gone off to search for, or we could hear they were coming from the river and we were just having such a great sighting with elephants and really there's nothing you really need to say. Just sitting with elephants is magic in itself. <laughs> 